Good morning, everyone. You are watching Barnesable this morning. This morning, I am at the Sturgis Library, joined by Library Director Lucy Loomis. Thank you so much for having us today. Oh, we're pleased you're here. Well, just the Sturgis Library is awesome for many reasons, but one, really, you guys have just a rich history. Talk to me a little bit about the history of the Sturgis Library, if you can. I can. Um, it was built originally as a meeting house for the Reverend John Lothrop, who came over to this country in... Um, the early 1600s, just like the pilgrims did, to escape tyranny and, and practice his religion. And he brought his uh, congregation with him. They built this building as a meeting house. They had outgrown their previous one. And um, then they outgrew this one fairly fast. This room was um, where they gathered. Um, and then it was a um, private home for his family and his descendants, including William Sturgis, who um, the library is named for. So it was a private home until the 18, mid-1800s when he donated it to the village as a library. It, was, it, it became a library in 1867, and it's been um, a public library ever since. It's had a number of additions, and um, right now, if you hear the noises upstairs, we're having some painting done. Um, but we're also having a really interesting building study done, a historic structures report, um, where they try to determine um, the different portions of the building when they were built and um, see if there's original material. And they've discovered um, a number of things down actually underneath this room. Um, they're doing an archaeological dig and they're also doing some dendrochronology on the original beams to determine if they were really trees that grew in that time period and then they can really pinpoint that this building was in fact built from timbers that um, dated back to the early 1600s. So. Right, because at this point, it's believed that this is the oldest building that houses a library in the U.S. right now. Right, also the oldest, one of the oldest houses um, on the Cape because it was a house for over 200 years, and the oldest um, meeting house in existence that we know of in the country. So a lot of superlatives surround the the, the date of the building and how it's been used over time. So. Now, how long does a study like that take to complete and, and get some uh, information back from that? Well, we've already got information back, but it's not fully complete. It's taken about six, it's probably going to take about six months. There's a lot of different people that come in with different expertise that look all over the building, under, in the basement, in the attic. Um, and they've really discovered some, some interesting things and found some interesting artifacts already. Um, and then they're going to come back and do that again. So, um, With the archaeological dig uh, downstairs, what kinds of things are they finding or what do they think that they might find? Well, they found some pottery. They found a cat skeleton. They found what looks to them like a brick walkway from, from the 17th century. Um, they they found some old clay from an old chimney and they can sort of take that apart and they'll find remnants of things that they can then date back. So they said that when they're done, they think they'd have, we'd have enough stuff to exhibit and really show a little bit more about the early history of the building. And there's some other things here in the library too. You guys have vast collections of historical data and uh, sort of genealogy, so yep. to speak. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, we have the biggest collection of genealogy, maritime, and local history, Cape Cod history, um, on the East Coast, probably in the country. Um, in addition to the books that you see on the shelves, we have um, uh, b huge archives down in the basement, um, and that consists of original documents, photographs, letters, ledgers, ship's logs, all kinds of things that people can come and do research um, on, maps tons of things. Um, we've had authors come and do their research here, Sally Gunning, Nathaniel Philbrick, a few other people. So um, it's really a, a vast resource. We're actually in the process also of doing a, a project to replace the existing archives, which were really not built to be climate controlled. We've tried over the years, um, but we're going to be building a new archive that's, that's much bigger than the existing one and has really state-of-the-art climate control in it. So that's an exciting project too. Just thinking about all of the archives and, and the history that you have here, it's sort of incredible to me. Is that a huge added responsibility for you as a library director to sort of have all of that under your wing as well as run a library with activities throughout the, the year? Well, it you know, it is, and but it also makes the job much more interesting and exciting. You get to do a variety of things during the day and you get to, I mean, I've learned so much. I already had some knowledge about archives and, and 
historical collections before I came here. And you get to interact with more people and get do collaborative projects. So to me, it makes the job, you know, 10 times as good as it would have been. So I love it. And talking about the history and cool things that you have here, you actually have uh, the Lothrop Bible. Tell me a little bit about uh, that, how that came to be here at the library. Well, and, it, and sort of maybe the history of the Bible itself. Sure. Um, the Bible came over on board ship with the Reverend John Lothrop. It belonged to him. It was published in 1605. And um, the, by, the anecdote says that the pages burned while he was on board ship. He repaired the pages and then wrote in the text um, from memory. And you can see handwriting on the pages. It was passed down through the Lothrop family for many years. And actually, it was dedicated to the library um, and donated in a ceremony at the courthouse in 1957 and um, so it's been here ever since right now it's in this um, microclimate um, display case that keeps it from getting dirty and keeps the humidity out of it but people come from all over the world to see it um, they, it's their ancestral it's a, it's one of the only artifacts connected to him and so it's they come to see it and kind of um, visit their ancestral home so that's that's another thing about working in this library people come from public library services. And they also come because it's a historic building, they come to do research, they come to do their genealogy, and um, they come because it's the oldest library building. So, right. lots there's, of things. It's just rich with history. If, if there are residents out there, do you have a lot of residents that like to come and sort of look into their lineage as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have regulars that are doing, I mean, come for hours every week that are really doing extensive genealogy. People from the Cape Cod Genealogical Society come here regularly. And then people travel here to, to do research. Some of our resources are online. We have a, the Barnstable Patriot, the first hundred years is a digital archive. Um, that's a huge uh, resource for people and we're trying to get funding to do the next 50 years. Um, but most of the things that we have here, people have to come and use here, um, but they sometimes spend days just pouring through not only the books, but the, the research archives downstairs as well. Now, for library goers, it might be a little bit intimidating uh, to, to sort of even know where to begin. Is your staff able to help someone who may be interested in this type of thing? Absolutely. People come in and to use this part of the building. They just need to sign in. Um, we can lock up their you know valuables in the closet, and they come in, and we get them started. We show them where to begin. and. Um, you know, once they get the feel for the for the genealogy room and how to use the resources, they're they're experts pretty soon. So, now, are there any extra steps that you have to take? Are there any special rules that uh, someone using the genealogy room that have to follow? Uh, touching things, or you know, maybe are they not allowed to take pictures? Any special rules that they need to follow? Um, they, as I say, they need to sign in. They need to lock up their coats and their their bags. Um, we do ask people that they just use pencils because genealogists love to correct things. So we, if they get that urge, we don't want them to do that, but at least they don't do it in pen. Um, really, there's not m many rules. They can take pictures freely. They can photocopy everything that's in the, these two rooms. If we have something in our archives that we don't want photocopied, we put a restriction on it. But um, they request the things from the archives and we bring them up so they can use them. So. Is there anything interesting you've found maybe over the years uh, or done any research yourself at the library? I have done a little bit of research. I did find that I am related to John Lothrop by marriage um, through my ancestor Israel Putnam. So that was interesting to have that connection. But if you look at the, the family tree of John Lothrop, I think everybody in the country is related to him. So it wasn't very unusual, but it was, it was neat to find that connection in one of the books here. And then anything else you want to add before uh, we finish today? Um, I just hope that people, if they haven't used this part of the building, um, it's it's here for the entire, um, all the residents to, to use and enjoy. And we'd love to help them find their ancestors if they're interested in that. So Great. Well, thank you so much, Lucy. I really appreciate you giving us this guided tour, so to speak, of Sturgis Library. Sure. No problem. Thank you. For Barnstable this morning, I'm Sarah Mannell.